Good morning. It is a joy to welcome you. And I uh, want to begin with an announcement. Uh, next Sunday on the 24th, we will begin worshiping outside at the parking lot of the Shelbina Methodist Church. Uh, so what that's going to look like is um, it'll be a slightly shorter service. Use the bathroom ahead of time because um, we will have some bathrooms you can use. But once one is used, we won't be able to use it again until it has time to be cleaned. Uh, please bring your lawn chairs at six feet apart. As you come up, there'll be a station where you can use a hand sanitizer. Grab the handout with the hymns and uh, an offering plate uh, if you so choose to make an offering. And then uh, sit down and we'll have worship six feet apart from each other. And I, I look forward to, to seeing you. Um, in theory, I had some vacation planned for this time of year. Uh, in theory, I was headed down to see my parents, and my children were very excited about this because my parents have a pool. We are not going to be uh, taking that trip, but I had arranged for some people to cover for me when I was uh, traveling, and Michelle Ratley had agreed, uh, gracious, graciously agreed, to uh, preach for me in my absence. She had prepared a sermon, and it, it's a good sermon. It's a good word, and I think we need to hear it, and it is fitting to this time. And, and so I am uh, very thankful to her that uh, she has recorded this sermon for us today, and, and so that is what we're uh, going to share this morning. Um, so uh, please uh, join with me now as we hear the Word of God uh, read by uh, Josh Ratley, and then the sermon shared this day by Michelle. Luke fifteen one through seven. Now the tax collectors and sinners were all gathered around to hear him. But the Pharisees and the teachers of the law muttered, This man welcomes sinners and eats with them. Then Jesus told them this parable. Suppose one of you has a hundred sheep and loses one of them. Does he not leave the ninety-nine in the open country and go after the lost sheep until he finds it? And when he finds it, he joyfully puts it on his shoulders and goes home. Then he calls his friends and neighbors together and says, Rejoice with me, I have found my lost sheep. I tell you that in the same way there will be more rejoicing in heaven over one sinner who repents than over ninety-nine righteous persons who does not need to repent. Good morning. Andy has asked me to give the message today. This season is a time of isolation, fear, and anxiety and feeling lost. With the COVID-19 pandemic, thousands have died all around the world and our day-to-day -day lives as we know them have come to a complete stop. These feelings cause many to do things they wouldn't ordinarily do, such as going completely bonkers over toilet paper. I mean, really? A great majority of people rely on their workplaces for their identities and their second families. Being told to work at home under normal circumstances is a time to rejoice, but in this case, not knowing when you will gather back together is stressful. Add to that the issues of having family members at home to help at the same time. I will say that I'm thankful at this stage that my kids are of college age and can be self-sufficient. I did homeschool them at one time and while we were out of country, but we weren't on lockdown, so that was easy compared to what parents and grandparents are being asked to do now. My parents, my prayers for these people, for their patience, go out daily. And for ex essential workers, the fact that you are being placed in harm's way on a daily basis is so hard on you and your families, all for the good of society. We have never before faced a situation like this where everyday people, untrained, put themselves at risk so that social services can be ongoing. Let's remember another recent time that changed the way we live in America. Think back to 9-11. Church attendance spiked through the nation. However, reports show that it only lasted a few weeks before going back to the level it was at. Fast forward to 2020. We now have a horrifying situation with COVID-19 and the church, which has shown time and again to be a sanctuary for those without hope, has been shut down. 
we are not allowed to gather. To be a family of worship, to pray and praise and God together in the same building. Not having access to the support of the church is devastating to the family of Christ. In times of need, the church brings support. In times of suffering, the church brings comfort. In times of hunger, the church brings food. And in times of thirst, the church brings living water. In times of fear, the church brings hope. And in times of darkness, the church brings the light. Many churches are creating workarounds so to supply these very things to the families and the communities. The use of technology for services, meetings and Bible study groups are just one way to maintain a connection within the church family. Food banks are essential for the communities with so many unemployed. Grocery deliveries, yard maintenance, anonymous donations to families for utilities and rents, are just a few ways that we have seen or been a part of to help our own community. Keeping the foundation of a community solid and functioning until such time we can resume a more normal life is a very important activity that the church supports. And when we are finally able to come together as a family, we will be celebrating as at a wedding feast from the days of old with singing, dancing, shouts of joy, praise and adulation. As one body, we will thank the Father for bringing us back together. These first few Sundays will be joyous reunions for the body of Christ. However, I want you to look around. Who's missing? Why aren't they here? Some will have been called home during this time. And we need to take time now to celebrate their lives and how they have touched ours, while also giving the support that we were unable to do during quarantine to the bereaving family members. But what about the others? Who else is missing? History has shown that turbulent times will create a spike in church attendance. Think about what a spike looks like. Notice the point and how it goes. This side goes up to the point. That's the good part. Now take a look at the other side. Well, you are familiar with the saying, what goes up must come down. Well, what if we change this spike into an incline only? As church members and disciples of Christ, we are responsible to and for each other. Yes, this has been a time of fear, isolation, and anxiety. Many of our members have become like the lost sheep in Luke 15. They have become separated from the flock and may not know how to get back. Take a look at verses 4 through 6 again. And I read, Suppose one of you has a hundred sheep and loses one of them. Does he not leave the 99 in the open country and go after the lost sheep until he finds it? And when he finds it, he joyfully puts it on his shoulders and goes home. In this parable, the shepherd leaves his flock to search for the lost sheep. Why does he do that? Because the father is unwilling that the littlest would be lost. Every member of the flock is as important as the others. It is God's will that we all be saved. However, he gave us free will, and so we oftentimes wander away from the flock. When a sheep wanders from his flock and loses sight of them, they cannot find their way back. They are lost. What causes sheep to get lost? Well, distractions and looking for greener, sweeter grass. Head down, eyes slightly coat. Head down, eyes slightly closed in contentment, as sheep will gather and graze along happily, following the next sprig of grass until they look up, suddenly realizing that they are no longer where they belong. How do we wander from the flock? Work, entertainment, self-worth, peer pressure, anger, any number of reasons. These are our distractions that, like a sheep who loses sight of his flock, cause us to lose sight of God. As we pursue these trails, we become further and further from God and are soon lost. When we realize that we are lost, we don't know which way to turn to get back home. 
Because of our new norm created by COVID-19 that has us all social distancing, we have become separated from our herd. We need to return to the fold and this has become the current task of the church. We need to become shepherds, leave our pews, and look for those who have wandered off, so to speak. Because of their fear, their anxiety, or even loss of faith, they are not with the flock anymore. Reach out to them and reconnect. Remind them how much God loves them, and we, the church, do too. Bring them back into the fold. Remember, it is the will of the Father that not even the least of these be lost. I love this parable. Whenever I feel down or feel disconnected, I remember that Jesus is the Good Shepherd and that He is willing to leave the 99 to search for me. And this gives me complete sense of peace and comfort. That gives me the strength to move forward in these troubled times and I pray that it will for you too. Amen.